In the beginning, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, we are going to speak concerning the origin of life, the origin of this universe. Where do we come from? How do we know? Well, God revealed Himself or He revealed His marvellous work of creation to us in the Scriptures. And the book of Genesis gives to us the origin, our origin. And we're going to take time on the Lord's Day to study and understand and know about life and the purpose for life by which God has uh, intended for humankind. And may this study bless your heart with understanding and with the presence of God. So the first thing that we saw in our text here in Genesis 1 and verse 1 is the beginning. Moses wrote this about 1,500 BC. And that's about 3,500 years ago. When God first revealed to us, to Moses in Mount Sinai, concerning the origin of mankind, if God has not spoken, how would we know our origin? Where do we come from? And here is given to us the self-revelation of God through His Word. And our text tells us, in the beginning, God. A very interesting description of the beginning of all things. Well, the beginning before time began. Because our text tells us, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That was the beginning of time when God began the creation, the building of this universe in which life brings, comes into existence. And so we would like to understand and know that God is, was in the beginning in the beginning of no beginnings. In other words, He is the self-existent God who was there when He created the heaven and the earth. And the Lord wants us to understand of God and who He is, His transcendent presence in our lives. Transcendent presence throughout this created world how critical, how important it is that men know his maker, his sustainer. Where did our life come from? Who is it that is enabling our heart to continue to thumb and beat? You know, recently I was acquainted with the, a pacemaker, how the heartbeat of a person can drop and drop to a very low level. And I was told that beyond 40, lower than 40, it would be critical. How is life sustained? Well, God has been gracious to give an invention that enables a man to be able to have the heart pumped so that life can continue. The pacemaker, well, I thank God for His mercy and His grace in helping us to see and know how fragile life is. Beyond 40, we are told, the heart would stop. And, but we thank the Lord that 
there is a God who knows all things, who sustains life, and He's in, in control of life, and that we can trust Him to guide us in life. And here we are told that this is the God that created life. He was there in the beginning of no beginnings. He was there creating. And this word there is very interesting. You know, for us, if you would like to make something, uh, we would have to have material in order to make and uh, produce something, create something. Like this Bible was created made because there was the material that was made available for this. But here, the word that is given for the creation of heaven and earth is a special word. It's a word that means to create out of nothing. Out of nothing, the world comes into its existence. God created. The power of God to bring nothing or something out of nothing is amazing. And so as we meditate upon this text, well, we'd like to consider first about the transcendental presence of God in the life of this world. To know Him, to know our Maker, that's the first thing. And to know that He is the powerful one. The Lord wants us to know His presence. And the Lord also wants us to know His power, that He created something out of nothing. He created the heaven and the earth. The vast universe, as you look up the sky, as you fly in a plane, as you look out into the, the, the skies, how beautiful, how magnificent, how great. As you think about our God, a mind-boggling truth comes, how God created out of nothing the heaven and the earth. So the universe comes into its existence because God spoke and it was created. In the beginning, God created any heaven and the earth. And it's interesting, as we look at creation, how God began, that there was a focus in God's plan of creation in that when He created the heaven, He created the earth. The earth, out of all the bodies that is in this universe, God specifically highlights that He creates the earth. This is where we are. And I would like you to think. Think about home about home. What do you understand about home? Home is a place where you find uh, comfort, rest. That is a place where you would, you know, take time to decorate, perhaps to take time to Fill up the refrigerator so that, you know, when you are home, you know that that's the place of rest for you. A wonderful refuge. At the end of the day or the beginning of the day. So when God created, I would like us to see that God's focus was in making a home for men. For you, for the souls of men. Because the Bible tells us that only man is made in the image of God. And so God 
in His creation, as we unfold God's purpose, right? three thoughts today we want to think about. Right? God's presence, in the beginning God, and God's power, how He created everything out of nothing. And thirdly, God's purpose. Why did God create the earth? Well, God created the earth in order that He may make a home for men so that men may enjoy this relationship that He has with God. And so, when we think about creation, we would like to think about fellowship. God wanting to share His love with us. The love of the Godhead. And you remember when we had our first church camp, we were studying Proverbs chapter 8. And how Proverbs chapter 8 described for us the beginning in the Godhead. When there was nothing in the beginning, there was the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And how that relationship was so wonderful. The harmony, the peace, the joy. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 8, so that we can be reminded eh, of what we have studied. Proverbs chapter 8. And verse 27. Or verse, well, we can begin in verse 22. It says here, The Lord possessed me in the beginning of His way, before His works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. This was a description of the Godhead. The Lord Jesus Christ, in the beginning, when there, was, there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he, was not, he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he had prepared the heavens, I was there. Here is a description of the Godhead, the Father with the Son. When He established the clouds above, when He strengthened the fountains of the deep, when He gave to the sea His decree that the waters should compass His commandment, when He appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by Him. Verse 30, as one brought up with Him, I was daily His delight, rejoicing always before Him. Verse 30 is significant, as we mentioned in our first church camp, because this was the relationship between the Father and the Son. A wonderful relationship. Then I was by Him. As one brought up with Him, I was daily His delight, rejoicing always before Him. Now, this was before creation, before in the beginning, God, the Godhead. The relationship between the Father and the Son, a delight. Verse 31 says, Rejoicing in the habitable part of the earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. So when God purposed for creation, he was, His purpose was that this creation, the epitome of His creation, the sons of men, 
humankind would share this delight and joy and fellowship in the presence of God. And so the Lord wants us to know right, in the beginning there was this presence of God, the Godhead. And the word there in the Hebrew, Elohim, right, is a plural noun. The Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Spirit. It was in the beginning. And here in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 9, and of chapter 8 and verse 30, is described for us the delight, the joy, the unspeakable joy, the peace, the harmony that was in the Godhead. And God intended to impart and share this joy to His created being. And this joy that he has, this purpose that he has, is that his created being would enjoy that fellowship with him. And so, as you think about this, as you consider the purpose for which God makes and creates, it causes us to just feel so precious how precious we are feel how uh, that we are the delight of God in all of his creation and so when God framed the universe the Lord wants us to know in Genesis 1 verse 1 is that the earth was the focus. And later on, as we develop, as we look at how God created, when He created the earth, man was the focus. God would build a most habitable earth, place the herbs, place the plants, place everything that we need for life, for sustenance, a paradise, before on the sixth day, he would place man in it. Because this was the purpose of his creation. You see, you turn with me to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 11. Exodus 20 and verse 11, it says here, For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, whereby, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. This was the commandment that was, the Ten Commandments that was given to Moses in Mount Sinai. God created in six literal days, and the seventh day he rested. And this was a command that God gave to mankind, whom He created, that we would live like Him. Six days He created. Six days we would labor. And one day we would rest. Dear friends, do you see the similarity? How precious mankind is? Because man, only man is made in the image of God. We are precious. And as, you, as we begin to study the book of Genesis, the Lord wants us to know that all the creative purpose of God was that man may enjoy Him, that we may enjoy His presence in our life. You know, life is such a celebration such a happy thing that God gives life. That we have life. And we are able to feel and know and enjoy the beauty that is around us. Right? We said before, 
that only mankind made in the image of God is able to enjoy. Look at the mountains and say, wow, how beautiful. Look at the birds. Look at the flowers. Look at all of God's creation. To know, wow, this is wonderful. And that is the purpose of creation. Mankind, that men would have fellowship with God. So, Solomon says in verse 30, that I was his daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of the earth, and my delights will be the sons of men. God delights to fellowship with you. And therefore, you know, your worship of Him daily, as you think of Him, as you commune with Him, as you spend time seeking Him as a Father in heaven, how precious it is that relationship. And the Lord wants us to understand that relationship, that you, God made in this world a home for you. This home that God makes is for you. And that we are special in the sight of God. And so here our text tells us, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, here it is said to us that when God first created the heaven and the earth, it was without form and void. In other words, it is not like what we see today. It was not populated. There was no form in it. It's dark. There was, there was no light. Uh, darkness was upon the face of the deep. So here is this, a description of how God was shaping the earth from the beginning. And I remember before we had the house that we are staying in. Uh, I took a walk up. It was still under construction. And so I went all the way up to the ninth floor and I looked out. Wow, I can see the walls being put up already, but the balcony has nothing beyond it. The walls were all cement. It's not like the finished house. So I went there and said, okay, I've placed the deposit. I'm here to inspect and take a look what that house will be and how I would like that this house would be. And so verse 2, you may think of it this way. Right? The Spirit of God hovering over the deep as God by His infinite wisdom, would create that home for us, for humankind. And so, the Lord is going to build and make for us a most habitable paradise. So, let us think as we consider creation, how privileged we are, how precious we are, in the sight of God, in the sight of our Maker, in the presence of all of God's creation, right? man stands closest to God. Only men share the attributes of God. We say the communicable attributes. Right? We are not infinite. We are finite. We are time-bound. We are not eternal. Not the incommunicable attributes, but the communicable attributes 
of God, who God is, the person of God, the personality of God. This is who we are. We are made in the image of God. So we are special. And the Lord is going to reveal to us how special we are in His creation. And this is what the Lord wants us to know as we think about beginnings. Right? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the textbooks today, if you go to the schools, we will be taught, our children will be taught that the earth comes by millions and millions of years of evolution. Is the earth that old? Certainly not. Did man drop his tail so that he is who he is today? Well, he was an ape millions and millions of years ago. Well, the Bible tells us that this is not so. And if we can, and if we can trace, and if we, if we trace the origin of the earth, you would find that it's less than 10,000 years. We have a young earth. And God created all things out of nothing. Life comes from God. And so, as we think of creation, as we think about what God had done, well, we would like to marvel at what God had done for us, that He created, and that this is the foundation by which we would build our life, that God is the one that sustains us. The book of Hebrews says, And thou, Lord, in the beginning, hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 10. The Bible tells us in no uncertain term that God created Another verse, Psalm 102 and verse 25, it says, Of all hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. And so the Lord wants us to know that He is the Creator. And the Lord wants us to know that He created all things out of nothing. Job 26 and verse 7 says, He stretches out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. Job 26 verse 7. He stretches out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. Our God, when He created the universe, he created the earth. And so, you know, we have been told that about alien, right, and outer space. Well, is that the focus of God? That's certainly not the focus of God. Because our text tells us here that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was the, the focus. Isaiah 45 and verse 18. Right, today we are going to speak about God's Word and what God had done so that we will understand in, from His revelation why all this came about. Isaiah 45 verse 18 says, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God Himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none 
else. So he made this earth so that from it, life will come. God would give life, bring life to this earth. Psalm 33 and verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. So in the beginning, God created. And God created by the breath of his mouth. He spoke and the universe came into his existence out of nothing. So as we think about creation, we must think how powerful a God we have. How great a God we worship. And is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything that the Lord cannot do? Is there any problem that the Lord cannot solve? This is the God who made the universe, who made all things. And this is the one who has created you because he has loved you from the beginning so that you may enjoy that life with him. And so, I said from the beginning, let us think of it like a home. Right? As a home that God has created, God has made for us. And in the home, who do you see? Well, you see the father in the home. And you see the children that God gives in the home. The parents or the, the children look to the father for all its needs. This is the Father in heaven. This is the Creator that has made all things for us. This is the Creator who has made us. This is the Creator who is sustaining us. And the Lord wants us to be founded upon the origin of His Word. That is, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. And that this universe is not uh, existence by chance, but by the design of an infinitely wise God. And therefore, if we understand this, and that we know that there is a God that is superintending over the world and that we are precious in His sight, that we are highly, most highly regarded and important in His sight, ah, then, you know, life takes on a different meaning, right? Life takes on a different meaning. And as a child of God, whom God has opened our spiritual eyes to know Him, we, are, we know God uh, and God's presence with us. And of course, we said uh, that for mankind, because of the fall, there is death. There is a physical separation by the body. But the difference is this, that for all who know God through Christ, there is no separation from God. In other words, death will not separate you from God. But not knowing Him not knowing his son will separate you eternally from him. There is an eternal separation unto judgment. And there is an eternal separation unto life.
Why do I say that? Well, because the Lord wants us to connect the origin with our present existence so that there will come into our hearts understanding concerning who we are and where we are going. And so as you think, as we ponder about the beginning, the Lord wants us to think about our privilege and our preciousness in the sight of God. In the beginning, God. The presence of God. And in the beginning, God created the power of God. How He's the wonderfully omnipotent God who makes all things and who makes us. We are wonderfully created by Him. And that He created the heavens and the earth. There is a purpose for that creation that men may dwell with God. And so, may the Lord help us for the world today know not God. The world today cannot understand the right hand from the left hand unless we would go back to the origin God revealing himself to us. And therefore, it is our privilege this beginning of this new year to study the origin, how, we be how all things begin, so that life brings with it a meaning. In other words, we have a connection with our Creator, with the Sustainer of life, with our Saviour, that we are living in Father's home, in Father's world, that we have a Heavenly Father who cares for us, who loves us, and that we can be connected to Him through His Son, Jesus Christ, so that all our needs, all our cares, would be well taught and taken care of. The Lord wants us to know that knowledge. Now, if we understand our origin, that we have been so preciously made of God by God, then it would dispel our fears, isn't it? That God has a purpose for your life. God has made you, God has given you life for His eternal purpose, so that you may enjoy that presence with Him. So if we have understood this, then, you know, uh, the Lord wants us to begin the year enjoying our presence with Him. And how can we enjoy our presence with Him? How can we enjoy the presence with God well, it is through worship and with the study of His Word that we will take time to know Him. That He is a God who cares for us and all our needs are met through Him. And therefore, we come to Him and we enjoy that communion and that fellowship with Him. So if you have a father who knows, who cares for you, who loves you, 
who takes care of you, do you feel comforted as a child? Right? As a child, you think of, self, of yourself. The many things you don't know, many things you, you have no idea how to fend for yourself. What is the way ahead? But if you have understood that there is a Father in heaven who has created you because He loves you and He wants to enjoy His presence with you, to care for you so that you may acknowledge Him, you may love Him, you may serve Him, this would be the greatest knowledge or self-realization that we can have to begin the new year. So may the Lord bless us with His presence and bless us with His cheer that we are in good hands. We have a Heavenly Father taking care of us. And that if you have any need, before you know it, your Heavenly Father has already had a plan to ensure that your needs are met. How wonderful it is. Right? Because if you, if, as, if, when we study the cre creation, we would know right? this, was, this is our God. He would make the entire world, universe, populated with food, all the herb trees, all the fruit trees, and then he placed men and he says, you go and tend the place. You enjoy it and you live in it. This is our Heavenly Father. How generous, how marvellous a create, creator, father we have. So let us enjoy that fellowship we have with him in communion, through prayer, through his word, that your life would be, a, you know, this new year, a truly blessed one. All the fears will be taken away. God will give you faith that you have a heavenly Father will take care of you. You can commit all your thoughts to Him and you know that He's powerful enough to create. He's powerful enough to meet all your needs. And because He loves you, He's a loving Father, will He not help you, certainly he will help you. And therefore, the Lord wants us to lift off this first new year, uh, knowing his presence with you, knowing his power to care for you, and knowing his purpose to fellowship with you so that you may enjoy him in this new year. May the Lord bless this new year to you, that it will be a new height in your earthly existence, new spiritual height. 